Hey and welcome back to the channel. Toby Studios goes with Toby. Still me. In today's video we'll talk about the Victron Venus OS upgrade to 3.20. Yes, you heard right. There's a new release out. And it just got released, it looks like, overnight or today. Not sure about that. But I wanna, as always, stop talking, just show you what they present in changelog. Then we'll do the upgrade on my test Raspberry Pi 4 and then we'll do it on my prod system, which is a Raspberry Pi 3. And First of all, not only I want to show you a change log, I also found this one, Victron battery compatibility, now more accepting of third-party lithium batteries, which is cool. And uh, uh, this is as of today released, and there is a battery compatibility list here, and you can see there are, there's Battleborn, for example, which you might have heard about already about it, maybe there are other uh, manufacturers which you know already from names and whatnot, so it might be helpful for you. Let's get started with the change log first. So here we can see the file, um, update 3.20 as of February 13th. Oh, wow, three days over. I was not aware of that. So if we did a delay. Um, as always, I just will go through the document really quick. You pause wherever you need to and want to read it. I'll try to copy everything also in the description below, if possible. Kind of promise that everything will be there because there are some limitations. First thing what I wanted to highlight here is they finally, and also they call it highlights, <laughs> funny, they uh, include support for the new Orion XS 12 to 12 volt DC to DC charger up to 50 amps, which is pretty cool. I'm still waiting for it, so I'm not having it right now. So as soon as I have it, I'll test it and we'll also connect it, obviously, to our Raspberry Pi setup with Venus OS. Continuing, there is the managed batteries. We do see the Acrano. I think it's Acrano, 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 GX. Uh, they fixed something when it's cold with the generator man monitoring, with the PV inverter integration, with the multi RS, and uh, I'll continue on the other page because there's more. <laughs> it's definitely a jump from 314 to 320. Uh, then they added uh, new languages, talking about a Crano again and the server GX. Then we have the Anemia 2000 Modbus, as well as the Venus OS Large Node Red, and Signal K, so they're pretty. You can see there is a lot of information they put in here. Uh, there is some version updates, some server updates, so there's a lot of stuff going on. In case you're into that, um, there might be a lot of changes and updates. And then there is more information about the developers under the hood, which I always like that they add those comments. And also, they have the links to the GitHub. One thing I wanted to highlight is the add files for the Raspberry Pi 3A Plus model. I have the 3B. So I'll just leave it as it is. And then they also added WireGuard tools as optional package, as well as enable the WireGuard driver in the kernel. So in case you are interested in that part or need it as well. I really, and as always, I just jump through that. I hope you pause whenever you want to see something detailed. So, and I would just jump right into Raspberry Pi 4, which is my test device. It's this one. We have two one wire connected with, we have the Raspberry Pi processor temperature, which I'm using with the setup helper. Let's get started. We'll go to settings, we'll go to firmware, we'll see, yeah, we see that we have the version 3.14, that's already updated last time in this video. And now we want to do on online updates. I want to have the latest release version, and you see already uh, update available, just want to double check, press to check, and there we have it. Press to update 3.20, we'll just go ahead with that. And image type, normal by the way. Let's download and we'll be back when it reboots. Let's try to reconnect. Oh, it's already back up online. Let's wait for the setup helper. Usually it takes a couple of seconds to a minute. And the last package is usually the GUI mod. Let's see, maybe not. Oh, yep, maybe it is. Just give it a little time. I know, I'm not really patient. <laughs> Let's see if it comes back quickly. Let's reconnect. And there we are. All right, what I can see, we have the GUI mode installed. Why? Because I can have, because I can change the dark mode. Let's go to settings. Let's go to firmware really quick. We see we have installed 3.20. So that's good. Let's check online updates and we're not press for updates. Latest version, great. Hitting menu. And what I can see already, GUI mode is installed, so that's good because the settings is on top, so the first thing you want to click or can click 
I click on pages, I can see we have everything. Since I don't have a battery connected, that's what it looks like. Pretty accurate. Go to menu, go to settings, scroll all the way down to package manager. Let's see, check for downloads and installs, it's good. Active packages, setup helper, Raspberry Pi display setup, means as temperature and the green ones. Yeah, looks pretty good, in my opinion. Go back to menu and uh, I see the temperature. That stuff is working. I think it was easy, quick update just to see if it works and it does work. Even the setup helper is working. So next one will be re updating Raspberry Pi 3, which is my prod system. It's this one. It's dark mode, just to make a difference. And Oh yeah, I went already ahead to just check for firmware if it's there, and it is. But we can see uh, I have my propane tank, I have my Raspberry Pi temperature, I do have a smart shunt connected, I do have a solar charge controller connected, which is not hooked up to any solar at the moment. So let's go to settings, same as before, go to firmware, online update, and then we see... Yeah, I have the latest release version. I have image type large in this one. Let's do the press to check really quick. Update available. Let's update. Might take a little longer, by the way, because it's a large, but let's just go ahead. We'll be back when it's rebooted. Okay, nice. So there we are. Okay, it looks like it just rebooted. There's no setup helper fully installed yet. We'll give it a couple of minutes, but we see the propane tank already, the Raspberry Pi processor temperature. Oh, yes, then the setup helper is partially installed. Okay, smart shunt, correct, and also the MPPT. So that's good. And that's my cat, in case you heard her. I guess now it's installing the glue mod. Nice. Look at this. So we do have dog mode. The glue mod is installed. When you go to page. Takes a little time. There we go. Then we can see. <laughs> Propane tank, yeah, nice battery. Perfect. That's all I wanted to see. Go back to menu. Let's go to settings. Let's go to firmware. You can see version 3.20 installed. Online check for updates. No new version. Successfully installed. Nice. This time no troubleshooting, nothing um, I have to do, nothing I have to go for, I guess. Um, we'll go one last time to Package Manager. Check if all downloads and installs, active packages, let's see, we see... Setup helper, shut up, uh, shut down monitor, they are installed, Venus AS temperature, GUI mod, yes. The GPIO is not installed because I'm not having the board connected here anymore, so... Yes, that's my cat in case you heard here. She just got food, sorry. <laughs> all right, nice. That's pretty much all. In case you have any questions, any any feedback, what you wanna see and what you're missing in those videos, let me know. I just try to cover the change logs and also to see if it works for my setup. And of course, I don't have a big setup, which means I cannot test everything, but if there's something you wanna specifically see and, I, and it might be useful for me and I, put it, I like to put it in here, definitely. So yeah, let me know about that. Leave me a like if you like it stuff. Subscribe to the channel if you don't like like just things as well I'm doing. Thanks for watching. Cheers!